Gentleman yields back. The chair now recognizes the gentleman from Iowa, Mr. Nunn, for five minutes. Thank you, Madam Chair, and privileged to have a, uh, another Midwesterner sitting up here. Uh, your appreciation for capital outside the VC bubbles of certain communities is uh, much appreciated, and I think something that we'd like to talk about today. You know, as we sit here today, roughly 11 years after a divided Congress passed the Jumpstart Our Business Startups Act, or the Jobs Bill of 2012, we are still faced with similar challenges to help all entrepreneurs, many of you here in this room, as well as our Main Street shops, our small farmers, and the small businesses that grow off of them. And unfortunately, my perspective, time and time again, DC has added costly bureaucratic red tape that interferes with my constituents' abilities to come here and serve well in this. The House is determined to reduce regulatory burdens for small businesses and entrepreneurs at home. In my great state of Iowa, a record uh, number of more than 33,000 new businesses were started in the last year alone, post-COVID. It's our responsibility to provide adequate funding opportunities for those who take this amazing leap of faith as you have on this panel today. So, Mr. Conwell, I'd like to begin with you. When the Jobs Act was passed, one of the things that critics were most afraid of was the law would dramatically weaken investor protections and increase fraud in the securities market. But 11 years on in the Jobs Act, those predictions have not come to pass. Congress has continued to work on bipartisan issues to build upon the Jobs Act. In your view, how would a small business and entrepreneurs today in a state like mine in Iowa benefit from some of the new bills we are considering today? Well, one, you're now allowing for um, angel investors to be more active. And when you're talking about rural parts of the country, or you're talking about states outside of the major tech hubs, right. they're all funded and backed and supported by those local individuals. It's so important for the angel investors to have the ability to do more. Then when we talk about the ICANN Act, it allows for more newcomer investors to have more opportunities to raise capital. I wouldn't be able to raise capital if it wasn't for the Jobs Act and the 506C designation. And because of that, I now have uh, investors in my fund from all over the country, and I am investing in companies from all over the country. Every investor is not going to do that, but it gives us the opportunity to have more investors with more ideas and more different ways to go about investing. I love that innovative spirit. Well done and compliments on everything you've done there. Uh, Ms. Gladney, I'd like to speak with you on this as well. According to the SEC's office, the advocate for small business capital formation, small businesses, have accounted for 66% of the employment growth over the past 25 years. However, 89% of entrepreneurs claim that that access to capital is limiting their small business. In fact, 78% claim it's limiting their day-to-day -day operations, which is very scary for a small entrepreneur. Could you please talk about your experience during the early stages with WorkTorch and specifically in Kansas? What was one of the most difficult parts for you to be able to start WorkTorch? Well, Congressman, thanks for your question. And I was born in Ames, Iowa, so fun fact. There you go, huh? <laughs> Cyclone territory. Um, yes, you know, I, and I appreciate that question because I think so much we talk about um, startups and small businesses when they're past that zero to one phase. That zero to one stage is so difficult. Um, so when my co-founder and my sister, um, Angela and I, when we decided to start WorkTorch, we had so many barriers when it came just to even knowing or understanding. It was very clear that we were outsiders. We didn't even know there was an ecosystem that existed. So of course we didn't know the players. We didn't understand the language. Right. Um, we didn't understand any of that. Um, so just even trying to get from zero to one was so challenging, which is why we had to do something so risky as taking our 401ks because we were seen as outsiders. Um, and so really the more that we can support entrepreneurs in those earlier stages, I think a lot of, unfortunately, a lot of businesses, they die in that zero to one ideation stage. I would agree with you on that. So let me be quick in this because I think this is an important thing for entrepreneurs like you uh, across the country. As you know, Reg A or the mini IPO offering process is less intensive and less costly than tra the traditional initial public offering. Do you think, and based on your experience, it's time for Congress to revise Section A? Uh, specifically, House Republicans are advocating that we raise the amount to $150 million from the current $50 million and include an inflation adjuster. Would this have helped you? Absolutely. You know, I, yeah. <laughs> I think um, just increasing the access, of course. I mean, I, I, there's 
it, absolutely. It would, it would help. You know, I, I see that the time is running out, so I just want to keep it brief. Thank you for your service. I yield back my time. Thank you. Gentleman yields back. I now recognize.